today we're going to do something that I haven't done on this channel in years and that is rank every single legendary and epic commander in rise of kingdoms so that way you guys know exactly how I feel about every commander in the game and you can make the best investments for your account now that we're about halfway through 2023 what's going on guys cheers now we're going to be ranking over 80 commanders here in this video so it might be a long video which means you should go get a drink a snack get a blankie get cozy get comfortable and don't forget to like and subscribe so you already know we're going to be jumping into tier maker and i've actually updated the tier maker to include every single commander in the game as well as a couple of placeholders here so if in the future i don't update this soon enough with new commanders that come into the game at least you'll have those placeholders so you guys can plan your account there will be a link in the description or maybe even the pinned comment to this updated tier maker it's also in order of more or less the availability of these commanders so it goes through you know original all the way through the latest uh and greatest legendary commanders and then near the end here we have like gatherers and all that stuff now before we begin I just want to be clear that this video is ranking these commanders primarily on their open field pvp performance okay I am not a garrison lead I am not a rally lead and most of you watching aren't either so I think it is most beneficial to the most number of people to apply this to the most common form of pvp that you guys will be engaging in and that is simply open field fighting you may be wondering why we're not talking about pve and that's because if you max out the best pvp commanders in the game you're probably going to be performing pretty well in pve as well now i also just want to explain the ranking here obviously s plus is the best and f is the worst but just because a commander doesn't land in the s plus or the s or even the a tier doesn't mean that they can't be used in the open field with pretty decent success it just depends on who you have access to for your account if you are a free to play player somebody that I put in the B category might actually be really good for you because it's the best that you can do but like a top tier whale would probably not really ever use them in the open field what I want you to remember is that if you're a free to play player you should probably only be using your universal legendary commander sculptures on commanders that I put in the S plus category if you are a low or mid spender then you can consider investing in some of the S tier commanders as well once you finish the S plus and if you are a heavy spender a well a crack and whatever then you can invest in the a and below that's my recommendation here okay with that out of the way let's do this in order from oldest commanders to newest because I think that's going to be a lot of fun and the first one we're going to talk about is Cao Cao now this is the first legendary cavalry commander you get your hands on unless you purchase Minamoto but Cao Cao is really fast in the open field he's great for PVE content because he has the peacekeeping tree uh, but he does fall off pretty hard in the late game so when it comes to how I'm gonna rank him here I think he's a very solid C tier commander he's great for going and quickly running across the map to get to an objective to fill a flag or maybe even to catch enemy farmers off guard while they're offline or something like that but realistically in season of conquest even though he has his museum relic it doesn't really move the needle for Cao Cao too much he's possibly okay as a secondary maybe if you're desperate for another cavalry march but I think C tier is very fair for Cao Cao next up is Charles Martel and this is a fan favorite so I, I really had a hard time deciding where I wanted to put him on this list because I've spoken very highly of Charles Martel sometimes I still like to use him depending on what we're doing in open field fights and he's relatively good in game modes like Canyon so I do have a soft spot for Charles Martel especially as an infantry player and because he's relatively solid for a very long time I think that his museum buff is really nice it gives him a nice amount of stats to an already tanky commander but the reality is that these days I would say Charles Martel is a solid B tier legendary I think that certainly you, you could probably use him for longer than you can use Cao Cao for example but when you take a look later in the video and you see who I put in A S and S plus I think you're going to agree that Charles Martel these days 
is probably not on the same category as them uh, if you wanted to be really generous you could put him at like the very end of a tier uh but i'm gonna put him in b for now and if i feel differently later in the video i'll move him next up is el cid i'm also gonna put el cid in the c tier uh i wanted to put him in d tier and just to be clear i do think that he's worse than cao cao he is pretty much the first legendary archer you're gonna get your hands on he's really only used in season one of kvk he does have a museum relic that is not that great i mean it only brings his damage factor up to 1300 which is still kind of lackluster it gives him some archer attack uh, he does have a little bit of march speed which kind of saves him here i think if he didn't have that march speed he would definitely be in d tier but realistically not a great commander next we have to talk about frederick now frederick is one of the most misunderstood legendaries in the game because a lot of players enter season one of kvk and there are some giga whales that max out or, or put a ton of sculptures in to frederick and his single target damage in the open field in season one of kvk can be really good he can put out a lot of single target damage but then you enter season of conquest and even if you get his museum relic he is effectively useless uh he has really no great stats there's there's not much to love about him a lot of his skills are useless yes he brings more commanders or, or more troops to the open field but I think this is a D tier commander. Uh, I know if you're a brand new player and you've seen how much damage Frederick can do in season one of KVK, you may think this is shocking, but I promise you this is an accurate rating for Frederick. Okay. I, I promise he ages like milk. He's really bad in the late game. Okay. So just trust me on this one. This is our first D tier legendary. Next we have Barca and Barca is just going right in F. Okay. Because Barca is probably in a similar effectiveness as Frederick but Barca is $200 so literally you pay to lose and Barca's trash he's not even with his relic he's trash this is an F tier commander and honestly I'm I'm okay with that uh, he's a pay to win commander so the fact that you know whales are spending money on him just to have trash is hilarious to me so we're gonna drop him in F and that's where he's gonna stay next up is Julius Caesar and Julius Caesar is interesting because if you asked me a year or two ago uh he would also probably be in F or D category uh but this time around I'm gonna put him in C now to be clear I think he's at the bottom of C but his new museum relic the fact that you can get two upgrades on it to give him 20 percent all damage and 20 percent March speed I mean those are like the two best stats that you can have in the entire game really insane relic on an otherwise horrible commander but some people are finding some interesting uses for Caesar so I'm gonna put him at the bottom of C tier if you want to argue he's D tier fine I think that's that's fine uh should you invest in his relic probably not I would say almost certainly not but the fact that it does exist means that I don't know I think he's a low C these days moving on to Mehmed now Mehmed is just like Martel in that he is a fan favorite he is a leadership commander that gives really nice AoE five target AoE in the open field the skill damage isn't crazy but he's also bringing more troops to the battlefield giving you a universal attack buff and a universal skill damage buff then he also gets an insane relic with a bunch of health which is nuts this is an a tier commander in my opinion uh he starts off decent and gets better over time i wish he had like a bunch of march speed or something to make him even more effective in the open fields but i still use Mehmed in my sunset canyon and lost canyon lineups he's great i think if you asked me a year or two ago i would say he's a b tier but with his new relic that you can double upgrade i mean come on 30 percent troop health that's universal and 10 percent skill damage on top of the 20 percent he already gives you Mehmed is a great secondary commander and i think he deserves the a tier moving on to minamoto also known as money moto because this is the first vip commander that you get access to to and you have to spend 200 dollars on him there's no other way to get him he is really good in the early game and later down the line he gets a really nice relic that gives him a ton of stats his single target damage is through the roof he has a really nice really solid debuff on his fourth skill his expertise makes that single target damage even higher uh, i think minamoto has aged well i think the museum has been very good to minamoto uh in the past i would say he is maybe a b tier commander or even lower but these days with his relic and some of the pairings he has available to him 
I think he's an A tier commander. I know that might sound surprising to you, but again, in Season of Conquest, you could do something like a Nevsky with Minamoto with the full relic and just have a really powerful single target damage machine. It's actually kind of nuts. There are even people that test rallies with Minamoto. Is it the best choice? No, certainly. It, I don't think it is these days, but I think Minamoto is a solid investment. Now, he is $200. So you can decide for yourself if an A tier commander is worth $200 when the S tier and the S plus tier are significantly better than Minamoto that you can get just by saving universals. So that's up to you. But I'm kind of glad that they've been nice to Minamoto over time and given him a really solid relic. Otherwise, it would be money in the trash. Next up is Mulan. Now, Mulan is a really interesting commander because to me her she has really one job right it's to be super super good at supporting whoever she's with okay a lot of players use her as a secondary in sunset canyon and one of the things is that she's kind of like a an a legendary version of epic joan of arc she's just buffing everything tremendously she's great in arc of osiris but she's not going to deal much damage her, her role is very niche and i feel like she kind of has to be expertise which is really hard for most players so for me, I'm going to put Mulan in the B tier. And that's with the understanding that, you know, if you need Mulan, you need Mulan. There's just some, there's some things, some open field engagements where you just need her. And in those cases, she's S plus. She's one of the best buffers in the entire game. But for most players, you're not going to need her. And you're, I mean, to get that benefit, you have to expertise a gold key commander. It, it's she's very niche. She's excellent at what she does, but you just don't need her that often in my opinion. So I think she goes in the B tier. Next up is Ragnar. Now Ragnar is also one of those gold key commanders. That's very similar to Julius Caesar. If you look at their kit, I mean, they're doing such similar things. It's, it's really crazy. It's almost boring that they implemented Ragnar because they kind of just put him in there as a cosmetic. He's kind of just bloat and filler to the gold keys to the tavern. Um, he, he again, he's very, he's like almost a Julius Caesar clone. I think Julius Caesar's relic is better, but I think the buff that you get from the expertise Ragnar active skill is better than Caesar's. So it's kind of just a, a flip, right? Um, 35% universal troop defense is solid 15% less normal attack damage. I mean, that's really nice as well. So a really, really tanky museum relic here for Ragnar. I'm going to put him in the C tier. Uh, I think that again, with the relic, he's C tier. If he doesn't have a relic or before the relic came into the game, he would be D or F tier. Uh, but it, it's a really universal good relic. People have been testing some really crazy rallies with, with Ragnar secondary, and it's, it's an interesting choice. Okay. It's an interesting choice. I think his relic, because again, with Caesar, the relics are just so powerful that if you happen to have them expertise, like they're okay. They're okay and very universal. So I'm putting them in C. Next up is Thutmose. Now, Thutmose is one of the reasons why I decided to make this video as well, because now you're going to get access to choose him on the Wheel of Fortune in, I believe, season two of KVK. Uh, he's still available in the Gold Keys. He's not available in the Expedition Shop for some reason. Um, but Thutmose is like a very well-rounded Archer Commander who has recently gotten a buff to his expertise to take less damage, I believe, from infantry and he has a really good museum relic he gains like 25 percent attack and 20 percent health he's got three target aoe there's a lot to love about the mose and the fact that he's a gold key commander is really really good i would say that mose is a solid b tier commander and in fact i would say he's probably better than mulan i mean for a lot of players entering into season of conquest for the first time he may be your best archer legendary that you have if you haven't been working on e song Ye. so I mean, he deals more damage than Mulan. That is undoubtable. And dealing damage is a much more universally desired thing than what Mulan does. So I'm actually going to put him above Mulan. I'm going to put him below Martel. Maybe that's just my bias. You could argue that he's better than Martel. That's you could interchange these depending on how you feel. I know all the, all the Archer gang is probably going to say that he's better than Martel. You can decide for yourself, but I'm putting him as a solid B. Next up is Ethel Fled. This is another fan favorite because she is a free to play legendary. You can absolutely expertise her just by playing the game every day, logging in and collecting her gold heads from the expedition. So every player is eventually going to have her maxed out, which makes her very, very popular. She has a super powerful debuff. It's relatively short, but it's very good. 
five target half circle aoe is insane she's great for peacekeeping she's great for slowing down enemy targets and she's a leadership commander so she can basically be thrown in as secondary anywhere she's great in sunset canyon there's a lot to love about ethel fled even though her damage factor is relatively low by today's standards her relic is actually okay it does give her some march speed which is nice she really desperately needs that especially considering who she's typically paired with you know commanders like trajan but her damage factor again is quite low so i'm gonna say ethel fled is a b tier commander i think she's probably more flexible than the other commanders here but i also just like martel i like his counterattack damage i like his tankiness i know i know you guys are probably saying i'm biased that's probably true i'm gonna put ethel fled here above the below martel uh you could definitely argue that she is the best in this category because she is easy to expertise you could argue that maybe she's a little bit lower because her damage factor is quite it's quite low these days but she does get universal troop attack on the on the relic so I'm gonna be fair and just put her right between these three and I think that that's a good spot for her next up is Richard now Richard is uh one of those commanders that a lot of people love to hate on and for good reason you get him very early in the game he's extremely tanky in early kvks he's got a healing factor which is super helpful for a lot of pve content it's really good for things like the golden kingdom for sunset canyon there's a lot to love about the healing factor and especially he is the barbarian chaining king and great for tanking and things like kokarak but this is a pvp tier list for open field fighting and the only thing that he really does in that regard is snares targets so i think if he's expertise he's one of the best slowdown commanders in the game one of the best march speed debuffers that you can get with that expertise but otherwise he's kind of a punching bag in pvp so i'm gonna drop him in this c tier i can't really imagine a world where i would use richard in pvp but for some reason i feel like i'm more likely to use a richard than a, you know a frederick for example so I'm going to put Richard at the bottom of the C tier uh, for PVP. You could argue that he's a D tier. I'll, I'll leave that guy. I'll leave that up to you guys. OK, um, but I'm going to leave him at a low C just because his healing factor is unique and because his snare is super powerful if you have him expertise next up is e song a now this is the uh pre kvk1 or kvk1 cousin to richard because these are the first two wheels that you typically get access to that are not gold key commanders and e song a is tried and true he's universal super powerful circular aoe skill damage uh he's got a 50 percent skill damage bonus buff on his fourth skill which applies to both commanders in the army it's insane but he recently kind of got power crept a little bit by juga leong uh basically juga leong is a better version of isong a at this point if you had asked me six months ago we would be putting isong a in s plus these days i think isong is a high s he is a high s i'm sure you're, you might be rioting you might be raging in the comment section below but please calm down take another sip of your beverage that i recommended that you get earlier in the video i think isong is a high s tier commander very good you should definitely continue to use him in your uh, lineup if you don't have juga leong i love isong ye he has insane aoe damage but he's relatively slow relatively fragile and he doesn't really do anything else there's no really great buffs or debuffs and that's it he has a small rage engine and attack buff but raw stat wise he's got nice he's got nice defense on the relic okay uh if he didn't have the relic i would say he, he would probably fall to, to a at this point but solid relic i think he's a solid s tier command charlemagne is f i don't even think we have to talk about that he's trash his relic is not enough to save him he's bad he's probably even worse than barca even though you have to spend money on barca uh, i'm not even gonna really talk about this too much i don't even know what they're like they, they should just i don't know what they should do with charlemagne but he's he's garbage and he'll always be garbage i guess unless they randomly buff him but yeah f tier for sure next up is lubu also f tier and also a commander that you can't get anymore at least to my knowledge uh, i don't think there's any way to get this commander now that the event is long gone so if you're an older player in the game you might have him if you're not then you're not missing out on anything he's trash i'll put him at the bottom of f because you probably can't even get him these days next up is alexander the great this is another fan favorite you get him in season two of kvk which means it's somebody that you can work on pretty early in the game he's very supportive in the open field he gives your infantry a lot of march speed that they desperately need his museum relic is not in the game yet but we do know what it is and it's not that great unfortunately he's relatively squishy but he gives you a ton of attack and a little bit of defense a nice shield he's doing a lot of things in the open field but these days 
these days i think alexander the great is a high a i think he's a high a you can still use him in the open field he's still very good uh but he's not what he once was i think if his relic was as good as Yi song Ye's, for example he would be an s tier commander but it's not it's it's a relatively weak relic unfortunately for alexander the great uh he really needed uh, like infantry health or something like that to make him less squishy but it is what it is he is in my opinion a high a definitely a high a you could do guan yu primary with alexander the great secondary and that is a decent use for him these days but that is pretty much it next up is constantine now constantine uh it's it's so interesting because i played the game for so long i remember when constantine garrison was like meta like people were rallying with attila takeda and you needed a beefy constantine to counter that these days constantine has fallen from grace he's fallen 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 he's really not somebody that you can use in the open field he is a d tier commander i think he's better than uh than than freddy for sure he's very supportive in the open field right he's got the got a buff on his active skill that makes nearby allied troops take less damage which is very good he's still very good in canyon by the way uh, especially at five five one one very cheap investment there but at this point i mean he's kind of just a punching bag in the open field similar to richard um, and this is again why you could probably argue richard goes down here or constantine maybe goes up here it depends on really what you're doing but i'm gonna put constantine in d because there's just there's just really no reason to use him these days unfortunately and his relic doesn't seem to be able to save him either next up is edward of woodstock i can't believe we're only on season two commanders right now and this video is so long edward of woodstock is not good uh he's in season two he's great for rallies because he deals insane single target damage but his rage requirement is so high and his relic is not going to be very good in season of conquest um he's just not usable he's not usable he is a d tier commander i'd say he's at the height of the d tier okay uh he's got a lot of archer health there's some march speed there like you know there's there's stuff that you might like about him uh but at the end of the day he's just he can't do it he can't really do it it takes way too much rage i mean 25 percent more rage uh to deal a skill shot that is like the same as honda tadakatsu but it's single target like dude it's not worth it he's bad he's trash he's d tier next up is genghis khan uh genghis khan is a very weak glass cannon low rage requirement but he has like no stats and from what we see from his relic that's not really going to change that much uh he really needed a miracle for his relic and unfortunately he didn't get one so I'm gonna put him in D tier as well behind Edward of Woodstock you could make you know again uh we're talking about Cavs versus Archers here again so depending on what you prefer you could flip these two around I'm gonna put him behind Edward of Woodstock because at least Edward of Woodstock has some health and uh yeah next up is Saladin another fan favorite Saladin is a very solid commander he is uh, very tanky for a cavalry commander you get him in season two which is nice and now you get him from the wheel of fortune which is a blessing for new players in the game because he's actually very very good we love Saladin he lasts a very long time you can use him in season two three and even in season of conquest to decent extent he does start to fall off a little bit in season of conquest his damage factor is not great uh, so I'm going to put him in the A tier and I, I actually think I'm going to put him behind the other commanders in the A tier right now. He's more tanky than Minamoto, but Minamoto deals more damage. Uh, so you can make the argument that you could flip these two. I think Mehmed is definitely better than these two in season of conquest. Um, and Alexander the great, maybe I'm biased towards Alexander the great. You could probably make that argument as well these days, but, uh, this is what I'm going to put. This is, this is my tier list. This is my opinion. Okay. You guys can make your own in the comments section below there's going to be a link to this tier maker. Next up is Tamiris. Now Tamiris is interesting because she has poison stacks. She has a very unique debuff on her poison stacks which makes the enemy target take more skill damage which means she's very useful for debuffing a target that you want everybody to hit because not only is she causing them to take more skill damage but you'll actually see a little poison marker on the target that she's applying stacks to and everybody can see that poison marker which means she is really great for focusing down certain targets especially if you are an r4 or r5 an alliance leader uh, and you're really trying to get uh, the right targets to be removed from the open field i think tamiris is great um i don't i think her relic is actually decent um i'm gonna put her in a tier now if you're an archer player you, you might you know in some circumstances i understand that she can be s as like maybe a if you're double rallying something and you really want to apply the idea of i get it there's there's some advanced technique that you can use with her that makes her very good and when her relic comes into the game she could be even better uh but i'm gonna put her as a high a i'm gonna put her beneath mehmed um because a lot of players aren't i mean like a lot of players just aren't gonna get that much value out of tamiris to be completely honest with you but um she does what she does very well it's like 
it's similar to uh Mulan except she actually deals more damage than Mulan so that's why she's an A tier again you could make you know, for certain scenarios you can make the argument she's top A A tier um but for me I'm gonna put her right in the middle here next up is Wu Zetian and she goes in F uh this is an open field PvP tier list even if this was like a garrison tier list she'd probably still be F to be honest with you guys uh she aged poorly just there's no room for her let's let's be honest she's an F tier next up is Artemisia now Artemisia is interesting she's had a very interesting career here in Rise of Kingdom she came out she was garrison meta very very good uh and then she kind of lost a uh, lost her sparkle a little bit over time and then we got Boudica Prime in the game who actually can remove the negative debuffs that she applies to herself and now we have her sort of back in the limelight I think a lot of players are using her to great success in the open field she has really good AoE damage factor she gets you know if you pair her with Boudica Prime you can get a really nice buff for no downside so I mean Artemisia is really solid she's super tanky but very slow and because she's very slow I think I'm gonna put her in S tier I think she's an S tier commander uh, I think she's a low s for sure she'll probably end up farther down here by the end of the video but I think she is s tier I think a lot of players are using her she can be very good and I think that that's fair next up is Attila now Attila when he came into the game he was broken he broke the game for rally meta and he's been around ever since he kind of he's kind of lingering okay uh he's got the attack tree and he's one of the commanders that I can that can actually make really good use of the attack tree most commanders can't um he's really punishing if you swarm him but as commanders get more and more powerful these days it becomes easier and easier to handle the Attila and you you know he's really not doing anything other than normal attack damage and counter attack damage right that's really what he does um and so there's really no like debuffs or buffs or AoE damage uh, so he really didn't I mean he he still gets a ton of kills like if that's what you want is to farm kills Attila with Takeda is a great pairing uh but you know he, he's not what he once was you know back in the day you could argue that he's an S tier commander but for open field PvP he's not really a threat um I think again he can farm kills really well so I'm gonna put him in the S tier uh I don't think anyone would argue that he's a bad commander but I think he's a solid A tier okay I'm gonna put him here you could argue that you know him and Tommy you could flip these around perhaps uh, it's up to you I think I'm biased towards giving him a higher grade because I just remember how dominant he was uh and people still don't want to swarm an Attila right but that's really mostly for rallies these these days so I'm gonna leave him in the middle of the of the pack for a tier uh but you can decide you know where he actually goes in your mind next up is Guan Yu Guan Yu is a really good infantry legendary commander here in rise of kingdoms he has a really nice AoE damage factor he has even more damage on his fourth skill lots of uh infantry attack and his three second silence is super punishing for other players in the open field however he's getting a little old he I'm just gonna say it I don't I don't want that to be true either okay I am disappointed saying it myself but let's just call it how it is let's be honest with ourselves Wani was getting a little bit old look at his kit look at his kit it's a really nice AoE damage factor three second silence some bonus damage on the fourth skill 30 percent attack that's it that's it AoE damage silence attack buff that's a high s that's a high s uh back in the day and even maybe six to nine months ago he was s plus I would say but these days I mean the newer commanders are just better they're just better uh Guan Yu is insane he's very good I still use him every day in Rise of Kingdoms okay uh one of my best open field marches and part of the best arguably the best open field infantry march uses Guan Yu but infantry is not in a great place right now so it's not saying that much I think Guan Yu is interchangeable with YSG for S tier uh, I'm gonna put YSG ahead of him I th I think these are pretty much equal uh they're definitely both better than Artemisia in my mind I, th I think this is fair I think these both these commanders th they're so used to being an S plus that it's hard to argue where they go now but um I, I think that they they're interchangeable here for a high S so we're gonna leave it at that next up is Leonidas Leonidas is interesting he had a really good run uh he was pretty much the staple behind our boy Guan Yu for a very long time uh he's very tanky he he has great synergy with Guan Yu uh, but the problem is they don't have great March speed and they they're very slow and there's way better pairs for Guan Yu these days so Leonidas has fallen in favor and in fact I'm gonna put him in the B tier I'm gonna put him uh probably here I, I think that's a fair place 
to put him you might even you know consider him at the back of the b tier uh some people even think he's he's c tier these days um i think the reality is like you can get good reports with a guan leo you, you you can right um it's just so slow that it's not really that practical these days but like you can use him in sunset canyon and you know if you're if if you're playing defense in the open field the enemy is pushing towards you and you have a guan leo i mean it's gonna make your guan more tanky like it it there's great synergy there and guan yu is an s tier commander so having great synergy with an S tier kind of makes him okay uh I just I don't think I can put like if you look at who's in C tier right now like are you really gonna say that he's in that caliber I don't think he is uh, I think he's a solid B tier these days but we'll have to see hopefully one day him and Guan Yu get a relic and they uh become besties again maybe if they both get solid March speed on their relics we can run Guan Leo again I think that'd be really cool next up is Ramses Ramses is the most okay commander in the game like no one's gonna say Ramses is bad but no one's saying that he's great either right he's just super okay he's just a very average commander you're not gonna really regret investing in him but you're not gonna really be stoked that you invested in him either uh but one thing that we're noticing is that with Juga Leon coming into the game we may see an uptick in Ramsey's usage because he's got March speed he's got a lot of attack which which Juga Leon really desperately wants uh, and we already have some really nice pairings for Boudicca Prime so if you want to keep your Boudicca YSG then Juga Leon with Ramsey's could be a nice little nice little pairing okay uh, I think Ramses is an A tier commander. It's really hard to say where he goes in the A tier because I feel like he's used so infrequently these days. And the fact that he's so used so infrequently uh, should say, should be, that should be telling, right? It should be obvious that he's not great if he's not used that much. I'm going to put him at the back of the A tier, but I think, you know, in, in a month or so from now, if a lot of people are using him with Juga Leong, then I would say you could easily make the argument that he's like a high A, right? Um, we'll just have to wait and see how things change, but right now people aren't using him that much. So I can't really say if he's better than these other commanders, because like, for example, I can think of uses for Mehmed and Alex and Attila and Tamiris and Minamoto and Saladin. I can't really like besides Juga Leong, I can't really think of a great use for, for Ramses. So again, I'm leaving him back of a, but that could quickly change over the next couple of weeks. Next up is Takeda uh Takeda is interesting he's a he's a fast tank like that's kind of what he does um it's interesting because really you don't see him very often besides paired with Attila that's really that that's the pair if you're gonna invest in Takeda you you have to have Attila pretty much at this point um I've seen people in Sunset Canyon try to use him secondary to Saladin as like an off lane that's totally fine but I mean for PvP the only time you're really going to use him PvP is with Attila I'm going to drop him in a tier just because of that I mean like that's the pair right that's the pair I think they have to go together in general like is he great no he's he's worse than Attila because you can do Attila Nevsky right whereas to like that's pretty much the only thing you can do with him um so you know what I'm actually I'll drop him to the end of a tier how about that he's he's an honorary guest in the a tier for the single pairing that he he's used with and like when you think about like the commanders in b tier like is he more effective than the b tier commanders like maybe you could say he's a high b um but I'll just drop him in a because that's where Attila is and they go together Chandra Gupta is basically in my eyes this is like the cavalry version of Ramses uh he's not bad but he's just so okay that like people don't talk about him that much right when he came into the game he was a super interesting rally commander a lot of people use him a lot he he exhausts the target which lowers I think it lowers their their health but I mean you really just you don't really see him that much uh and I think that's very telling I'm gonna drop him in the a category because again I would say like he's probably better than the b tier commanders here like he's better than everything below him uh but like he's just a low a he's just a very average single target like decent stat stick I would say but like he's just okay next up is Cyrus now Cyrus is also really interesting because again Juga Leung just came into the game and I think that he might pair really well with Cyrus I think he will we have to see more real world testing in the open field with this Cyrus is like a sleeper pick I feel like there are some players that really swear by Cyrus and he's decent in the open field a lot of players don't see him often so they don't really know what he does and they probably just ignore him for that but he also has a slow burning circular AoE like Lee Song Ye has a massive AoE nuke and everybody knows you have to get rid of him when people see Cyrus they don't think oh AoE nuke right because it's a small damage factor but it's circular and it does tick over time and like you get nice value out of that and he's an overall solid archer I would say he's probably not S tier I don't think he's S tier uh he's probably better than Ramses right now could you argue that he's he belongs like here 
sure if you're an archer main like he probably belongs like here right he, he probably belongs here if you're an archer main to me I'm gonna I I see him less than most of these commanders so I'm gonna put him here I'm I'm tempted to put him above the Saladin because Saladin really is tanky and not dealing that much damage these days but it's really hard to say I'm gonna leave him here I'm gonna say this is a middle of the pack a tier commander uh again just like Ramses in a few weeks from now if we find that he's like really a great pair for Juga Leung you might even bump him up to high a but for right now I think that's a very fair place to put Cyrus remember what I said at the beginning of the video s plus everyone should have s low and medium spenders should also have a is where like the whales start to get into investing right uh and like these I think are all like if you're if you're swearing by Cyrus you're you're probably a whale right like ask yourself that honestly you're probably a whale so that's where I'm gonna put him next up is Harold man I want to be so biased with Harold but I just can't do it I, I want to put Harold in high a but I can't do it man I Harold is putting out a ton of damage and that's pretty much it he gets he gets more glass cannon the more he fights which kind of sucks but he also ramps up his damage he's like a rampage commander um the more that people that hit him the more damage he's dealing he's really interesting with Pakal he's really interesting with Trajan he's also like you can kind of use him with Alexander the Great as well but he's not doing buffing he's not doing debuffing he's just a massive like skill damage machine I'm gonna put him definitely above Cyrus you know what I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fair I'm gonna say most people would probably say Cyrus is but I don't know I'm gonna put him up I'll, I'll put him above Cyrus that could be my bias checking in you might be able to make the argument that he's not I'm gonna put him there I think again very middle average a tier commander I really want him higher I really want to put him higher because he he pops his active skill so much but he also just gets melted unless he's paired with Pakal and if he's paired with Pakal people just ignore him so you're not going to get the value out of it anyway I just got to be honest with you guys I think he's an average a tier these days Moctezuma is F tier uh I think he goes above who's that Tian but like that's like I mean I mean if we're being honest like this is this is probably the the ranking here okay uh Moctezuma is trash he's a season of conquest commander and he's still trash and he doesn't have a relic like there's really nothing to save him uh he's just bad and he just deserves to be here Nebuchadnezzar is a really interesting legendary I like Nebu a lot I wish he performed better in the open field than he does like on paper he should slay uh but he's just he gets melted too quick to do that I think but at the end of the day five target AoE very very good AoE he has 30 percent defense he has uh increased archer damage he has March speed really nice March speed he's good this is I think this is an S tier commander I think he belongs above Artemisia in my opinion uh it depends on the pairings that you use I, I think you know these days you, you might actually make the argument that Artemisia is better you know what actually yeah I'm, I'm gonna say Artemisia goes above him I prefer Nebu uh and I'm biased towards Nebu and I like Nebu more but I think if you were to ask like the top 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 tier players they're probably gonna say Art is better just because of the Boudicca prime pairing how she's gonna play into the Juga Leung meta though I don't really know so these two I would say you could flip-flop depending on how they evolve over the next month or two you know what it's it's this is my tier list I'm gonna put Nebu higher uh I'm gonna put Nebu higher but we'll have to wait and see how that changes next up is Theodora and as a PvP open field commander she goes in F tier uh she's got circular AoE so I'll put her at the top but that's pretty much it that's where she lives and dies it's it is what it is next up is Trajan now Trajan is a commander that I've I wish I invested in him back in the day um but they're just I didn't feel like building a, a leadership set right so I, I never did uh Trajan is really good he helps unlock some more potential in the entire team out in the open field and he could be very tanky he's very supportive he's great in Sunset Canyon Lost Canyon great with Mulan great buffer right um and he makes your entire you know, basically all your armies do better uh, I think he's a low S I think he's a low S I think I really want to put him lower but like the reality is that like he's good at what he does he has a good role most players use him in in you know uh, the the high-end players really find great use out of Trajan still to this day and he's been on for a long time so I'm gonna put him as a low S tier he has a very kind of niche role but once you start to flesh out like a five six seven army murder ball uh Trajan's in there somewhere for pretty much everybody so I think he deserves an S tier ranking 
he is good at what he does next William 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 isn't it crazy how long we've gotten to the video we haven't hit s plus yet that's that's actually insane uh William is is he gonna be our first s plus here's the thing William is like uh, he's like Joan of Arc Prime um he's not as good as her because he doesn't fire his active skill twice but when you compare the kit on both of them like it's shockingly similar it's it's very good really nice rage buff here um I would say that he is almost s plus but he, he's not I'm gonna put him in s uh I'm gonna put him above Guan I know shocking I think people are gonna use William longer than Guan simply because of the buffing and the, the, I just think that it's going to he's gonna stick around for longer that's what I think okay unless Guan gets an insane relic I think William is gonna stick around longer than him and he's very good he's he's so good I hate his AoE area like it's a it's a rectangle shape that sucks but besides that he's very good I'm gonna put him behind YSG out of principle um I do think YSG is probably better so this is a good spot for our boy William still no s plus here that's insane Isun Sin another garrison commander and also Zenobia they're just both F you just can't use them in the open field there's just really no reason to they don't perform well there so let's just leave them an F and call it a day I'm not gonna bother with organizing the F tier anymore just if they're an F just don't do it okay just don't bother next up is Amana Torre now Amana Torre is uh really interesting because she was used to great success with Artemisia in the open field because it would allow Artemisia to not get signed like not to have that self silence right uh, but the thing is like there's no March speed there they're super tanky yes there's AoE on both of them primarily on Artemisia but these days you have better options for Artemisia than Amana Torre and I think she really falls off because of that right uh, if you asked me six to twelve months ago I would say she's probably an S tier commander in the open field these days I think she's a I think she you know you can still use her with Artemisia and have great reports in the open field but she's just very slow and tanky and I, I don't know I, I'm gonna put her probably here I think you know my gut my gut reaction is to put her much higher in the A tier but I think the reality is ever since Boudicca Prime and especially now that Juga Leung is in the game I think the reality is that she's just much she's just much lower down down this list um I, I just see her much 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 less frequently now uh there's just really not a great reason to use her but if you do use her she's still gonna perform pretty well if that makes sense so it's like just a better version of Leonidas that's kind of how I how I see her she's tanky she's slow you could do you could use her she's probably better than Leo but the, the truth is that she I, I maybe I'm missing something right maybe maybe in like Imperium Kingdoms they're still rocking her for some reason in like their seventh March or something that's possible right it's it's possible I'm not seeing it um and you know this is this is where I think she belongs you can let me know if I'm wrong about that in the comments next up is Chuck now Chuck is a, a really interesting um commander because he is infantry he's got some interesting AoE it's not great okay Chuck is not a great commander he has the attack tree which is like meh it's not great I think that he's got some interesting synergy with uh Sargon where he can even though his AoE is relatively weak he can actually spread Sargon stacks pretty well and there's an interesting pair there but I think he's he's kind of like the Chandra or the Ramses of infantry like he's not bad he's just not exceptional at anything like there's just better options for him so I think I see him more than Chandra and yeah I, I'm just gonna leave him there I think at the bottom of the a a tier I think that's a very fair place to put our boy Chuk because if you compare him to like some of the B tier commanders like I think he's he would probably like statistically he would probably perform better than them whether you prefer these commanders or not or whether it's easier to get these commanders is one thing but like uh statistically I do think Chuk performs on average better than these commanders it's hard to say it's not apples to apples but like I do think he's probably better than them but I don't know you, you might be able to make like a high B claim I think he I think he belongs here low A is is I think is fair A is full of the commanders where it's like you're either using them as like a third March or like why are you using them that's that's kind of what the A category is and that's why it's so big like they're very okay but they're very okay you know like high a is pretty good but low a is like not great moving on we have Gilgamesh and uh, I know this might start to get boring for you guys but I also think Gilgamesh is an a tier commander I think Gilgamesh is sort of like Ramses but he's like a little bit more tanky uh he, you know Ramses expertise can deal more single target damage but I don't know we got like the blood craving debuff here it's he's another one that's just like a very average very average archer I, I'm gonna drop him here obviously for like rallies and stuff he's great at cracking Zenobia so like he 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 kind of like is higher in my mind than Ramses but like 
how they actually perform in open field pvp you could make the argument that it's like this i think i, I see probably more gilgamesh than ramses these days anyway so i'm gonna leave him here i think that's a fair place to put him you might even make the argument that he goes like here and i think i will make that argument as well i think these four archers are like all kind of just a mixed bag of okay and uh depending on who you talk to is going to change where these go right some people swear by amanatore some people swear by cyrus some people swear by gilgamesh so i'm going to leave it like this these four can kind of all switch around all right i'm not going to put any more commanders in the a tier um because i don't think that's fair it's just too big okay so next we're going to talk about honda tadakatsu honda to me is really interesting i think he is um a really nice secondary to pretty much anybody just like mehmed okay uh but unlike mehmed he does have a slowdown and there's a couple of things that really make him interesting he's got universal attack instead of the attack and health on mehmed but he's going to be slowing down targets and slightly faster there's march speed there and it's 20 percent march speed which is is pretty significant i'm gonna put honda in the s tier i think at this point he's i mean he's gonna deal more da damage than trajan uh it's a five target aoe I i'm gonna put him above trajan but he's a low s tier um the reality is that he could just be slapped anywhere uh and pretty much anybody he's with is gonna need the march speed they're gonna need the aoe they're gonna need the attack buff i mean there's just there's really no complaints here other than the fact that like all those buffs are kind of average except for the march speed the march speed is nice everything else is average but he's just so universal he you can just slap him pretty much anywhere i'm gonna put him low s i actually don't love honda i i kind of want to i i personally would like to put honda in a tier but i think if you look at how much a commander is used as evidence of how good they probably are right like the the collective opinion of thousands of players is probably more close to the truth than just my gut reaction my gut feeling so i think he he deserves to be an s low s um even though i i think he's probably a high a so i'm gonna just i'm gonna leave him there next up is yadviga she's also a garrison so that is f in the open field for sure now we have pakal now pakal is interesting because um you can use him with Tark for great rallies that's kind of it though um pakal when he came into the game which is at this point a while ago to, to be honest with you which is shocking he came into the game with with chuck pakal with herald was a really punishing march to swarm in the open field and to this day it still pretty much is but with the advancement of archer commanders with Budica prime with juga leong it's even easier to crack that in the open field than it used to be and now that he's been around for so long a lot of people know to just avoid him like just don't hit the pakal right i think that's the psychological state that players are in these days i know for sure like when i see a pakal i typically avoid him anyway so i think for me i'm gonna put him above leonidas in the b in the b tier uh i think he's better than c tier for sure and i think he's just middle of the pack here um i mean like it, you know you could make the argument that he's like a better version of martel but it's harder to get him and like I don't, I don't know man yeah you know I kind of want to put him high B because of that but like yeah you know what I, I'm gonna do that I'm gonna put him high B I think you could make the argument that he belongs here just based on like actual like like he does perform well he just doesn't get to perform often right I'm, I'm gonna put him high B but if you want to disagree and put him lower I totally I totally understand that Suleiman is no he's just no he's trash Zhang Yu is this gonna be our first S plus the thing with Zhang Yu right is he has a low rage requirement just like Genghis Khan but it's an AoE damage which is really solid and it's a really solid defense debuff but besides that he's not doing that much he has a ton of cavalry attack and he has some nice March speed and he actually builds up cavalry damage over time uh and I kind of see Zhang Yu as like the Guan Yu of cavalry that's kind of how I look at it uh, I know there's a couple of key distinctions there but mainly it's an attack buff nice AoE a debuff like that's I mean that's really what they're doing uh, Guan Yu has some bonus skill damage on his fourth skill whereas Zhang Yu gains stacks of bonus damage on his fourth skill to me they're very similar um I think he's mostly raw DPS and he will probably be power crept out of the game soon so he's not s plus unfortunately i think he belongs above guan yu i know shocking i think he'll probably be power crept out of the game before william to be honest with you guys so i think this is a high s but not s plus that's just how i feel i think i think that's where he belongs cavalry mains are probably gonna rage in the comments and say that he belongs s plus i i hear you i get it but just like look at his kit like look at his kit and tell me that he's gonna last a long time I I think he's I think he's nearing the end of his life cycle just like Wan Yu and and that's just the reality right like next calf cycle are we gonna still use Zhang Yu unless they give us trash calves uh, probably not 
like probably not next up is Bert um Bert is interesting because nobody really uses him in the open field but those people that do swear by him do I recommend using him in the open field no is he tanking in the open field for a cav commander yes there's no AOE there he's a low B right he, he's a low B he's kind of like the he's kind of like the Pakal of of Cavalry like I don't think he actually performs as good as Pakal if you target him but like no one's really using him for for a reason right uh that's just the reality he can perform fine here but I don't know like could you argue that he goes here like let's let's say yeah let's say that's that's maybe more accurate on paper we're we're kind of working with a low sample size here right because like literally no one uses him in the open field but like like you could it's just like why would you right even the even the commanders in a tier are probably better that's my opinion I'm not a calf main but like I would never tell someone to invest in Bert uh like if they're a calf main either so yeah Boudica Prime ladies and gentlemen Boudica Prime the girl with the red hair she is definitely S plus let's not even let's not even drag that out okay really nice debuff on the active skill insane single target damage factor she gives nice cavalry stats I think there's some healing factor on her as well she takes less skill damage she's great she's great we love Boudica Prime she is doing uh most of what you would want from an open field commander except for AoE it's a bummer but um she's definitely S plus I think if you compare her to the other commanders in S she's gonna last longer in the open field we'll have to wait and see you know we you know Duga Leon's very good um definitely I think probably better than 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 Boudica Prime there's a little bit of foreshadowing there but I think she's an S plus I think the fact that she causes the target to take such a significant debuff and a slowdown by the way like it's just super punishing to that target uh and I really love Boudica Prime I'm super happy that I expertised her right away I think she's very good and she will be for a long time next is Flavius uh Flavius is similar to Bert in that there's a handful of people that do actually use him in the open field and they swear by it but most people don't use him in the open field because why would you and also most people don't have him because he's a garrison commander I'm gonna put him in low B very low B end of the B okay uh because he's not as fast as Bert so like he has a just built-in disadvantage there but like can he perform in the open field sure sure right if you need like a third or fourth infantry March which why would you do that but if you did do that like will it perform better than C tier probably D tier almost certainly but yeah for the open field like don't use him but he's a low B next up is Henry who also came out with Boudica now Henry is proving to be really interesting uh, a lot of people are seeing good garrison reports with him even though he's a rally commander and he's also insane for rallies as an open field commander you can build him very prickly right so it's very punishing to swarm a Henry now it's even worse to swarm a Henry rally but it's still pretty bad to swarm a Henry in the open field now is his active skill as good as Boudica primes I would say no Boudica has four skills that are available in the open field he only has three so in my opinion he is an S tier commander I don't think he's S plus I think he's very good in the open field but he's not the same tier as Boudica prime I would argue that he is probably somewhere around Artemisia whether you put him above or below depends on the pairs that you're running I'm gonna put him below again the archers are in a weird spot right now where over the next few weeks people are gonna test more and more different pairs now that Juga Leong is in the game and we're gonna start to weed out the ones that are less effective so I think Henry belongs around here right Archer mains might put him here or even higher I think he belongs here that's that's my opinion he's middle of the pack for S tier that's my opinion uh somewhere around here he's very solid Jan Ziska uh in my opinion I mean I don't really like with Bertrand and with Flavius I hear people say like oh I use him in the open field he's fine I don't hear that about Z John Ziska I think John Ziska is even more specialized in Garrison I think he's great for Garrison so I'm gonna put him in F tier just like with other Garrison commanders you could argue that maybe I'm biased towards Flavius I, I don't know I just don't I literally never hear it. no one's ever told me hey I actually tested my Jan Ziska in the open field and he's fine like I never hear that so I'm gonna put him in F tier you can argue if that is warranted or not I'll put him at the top of S F just in case you guys get mad at me next we have Joan of Arc Prime this is an S plus it's an S plus you know it I know it everyone knows it she's probably better than Boudicca Prime she has a double shot of her insane AoE she has rage regeneration she has everything that you want from an open field commander she has a little bit of health I wish she had more but she's great she's super good one of the best commanders in the game hands down exceptional secondary to Nevsky which is of course the next one that we're going to talk about and he also belongs in S plus you already know it 
now cavalry players are going to say that Nevsky is better than Boudicca Prime Archer players are going to say Boudicca Prime is better I love them both equally but I'm going to put Nevsky above Boudicca Prime uh I think just the reality is like they're very close um but I I like the stat distribution on Nevsky more I think he's just doing a little bit more and I really like that I think he's going to survive a while in this top tier this S plus tier of commanders so yeah I think again you could make the argument to flip these it's up to you I'm not gonna argue with you uh but I'm gonna put it like this next up we have Sargon who also came out around the same time as the other uh commanders in S plus yet for some reason Lilith decided to not make him as good okay he has insane single target damage if you can stay connected and you are slow because you are uh, infantry um he has a really powerful debuff if you can if you can you know apply it with aoe and i've been using him in kvk with guan yu and he's actually a really good secondary to guan yu but he's not s plus i wish he was s plus he should be s plus they should have made him s plus but he's not i'm gonna put him here i think that is middle of the pack if you're an infantry player and you use him a lot you know how good he can be uh he's very punishing if you if targets leave him alone like you will melt to that target and his debuff is great he's really well routed and does a lot of things that you want in the open field just no aoe and he's and like why isn't his damage factor instant right it should just be instant you know what i know what everyone knows it if his damage factor was a 2500 nuke he would i would say he might even be s s plus but it's not so here we are Scipio prime ladies and gentlemen finally we get to the one good infantry commander we're dropping him in s plus I'm putting him above Nevsky. Cav players are gonna rage in the comment section below. That's fine. I think his health debuff is better than the debuff on the active skill on Nevsky. He also has AoE, whereas Nevsky does not. So to my to my like in my opinion, I think CPO as a commander is just a better commander than Nevsky. Is he better than Joan? That is up to debate. Joan is faster uh CPO is more tanky he's gonna survive longer in the open field they're both support tree I'm gonna put CPO as behind Joan I want to put him above Joan I do I really do I really do and like his debuff is so good that you could definitely make that argument but the double skill shot on Joan is like dude it's it, she's built for the open field okay so again you could make this argument I think like they're very close in my mind I think most players would agree that Joan is better but like how much of that is because Joan has a good pairing right the CPO's best pairing is in S tier whereas Joan's best pairing is in S plus tier right so I think if CPO has had as good of a pairing as Joan does you would you would start to see players say he's better but I'm not gonna argue that I'm gonna put him behind Joan just so you guys don't rage at me but I think he's insanely good he deserves S plus for sure Tarek also came out around the same time as those commanders and guess what not S plus not S plus I don't know what like Lilith what are you thinking bro why do you hate infantry so much I don't get it Tarek is a S tier commander he is I'm putting him behind Henry um I sort of see him as like the infantry version of Henry I think Henry is a little bit better though so he definitely goes above him uh but he does deal an insane amount of damage to one target like he I've been using him secondary to CPO and he pumps out this damage it's actually insane how much damage he pumps out and people don't expect it because it's a Tark, right you think of him as a rally commander but he really pops off especially when you hide him behind your CPO people don't know he's there uh he's really crushing it back there and I think he's a very good solid S tier uh like if you compare him to what's in the A tier I think he's better than those based on like my use case so I think he's a solid S but a lower S because he doesn't have the debuffs of Sargon he doesn't have the AoE that some of these other commanders have right so I think he's a a low S for sure next we have Bobber okay Bobber is kind of awkward right because he's a super niche role you can make it work the, the the reality is you you can make it work but like why dude why would you make it work I don't know I mean I think everybody wants me to put him in like C or D I think the reality is like you could make him work and when you think about the commanders that are in B tier like if you maxed out Bobber and you built equipment for him like he would probably be low B like that's just the truth he he would be but like people don't do that because they don't want to right so like this is a toss-up you guys can you guys can argue with me in the comment section below you could tell me do you want him as a C like look who's in C tier right if you maxed out a bobber and you actually played ranged effectively like you know he's going to perform better than these commanders right so I'm going to put him at, at the end of B tier uh and and I'm going to put Margaret there as well because just like Attila Takeda you basically have to pair these commanders together so that's where I'm going to put the ranged comms they're not great they're really not I'm not trying to make the argument that they deserve to be in B tier just like 
you could make them B tier if you really wanted to. Next, we have Dido. We I haven't honestly done any testing in the open field with Dido, but as a garrison commander, I'm just going to assume she's F tier. I that, that might not be true, but like my gut feeling is that she's F tier. In best case scenario, like if I were if she were to shock me, she would probably be C tier, right? I'm going to put her in F. That is pending. It, it, she may be higher, but we're going to leave her there. Next up is Heraclius. Heraclius. However you want to say it, I keep forgetting how to say it. I think no joke i think he deserves a high b i actually do uh i think if you really look at his kit it's actually good he's just plagued by being slow uh, he's basically like in my opinion very similar to uh, leonidas he's got the leonidas disease right um he's super useful he's got a nice kit he just can't go anywhere man so that's the problem with heraclius or heraclius sorry but circular aoe is nice shielding factor is nice he gives you uh some raw health there which is great there's a lot to love about him he's got instant proc damage as well um people really do sleep on him honestly I think he is a high B like for the for example I'd rather take him as a secondary into the open field than a Pakal than a Martel than an Ethelflaed right like that's how I'm looking at this um does he deserve a probably not uh so we're gonna go high B for him in the right hands with the right commanders you you might even be able to really push him into a but I'm gonna leave him high B to be fair next we have Juga Leong uh this commander we've referenced multiple times in the video he is the newest commander in the game and he is an S plus commander no doubt about it in my mind massive AoE circular AoE five target AoE double AoE shot on his fourth skill he gives all damage bonus he's got Archer health like he's insane bro he's insane he's better than Boudicca Prime he's better than Nevsky he's he's just not been in the game long enough to say where he goes here um he's that he's the latest greatest and I think a lot of players with a knee-jerk reaction want to put him here they want to put him here and I want to put him here as well the truth is he doesn't have March speed which is a really bad thing for him um and there's no attack stats here so you have to really pair him with somebody like Boudicca Prime to get that attack stat on him or like I said earlier like Ramses for example right so I'm gonna leave him as S plus because I suspect that as we learn more about him he's gonna stay here but like worst case scenario he falls to like here right like I can't imagine him falling any lower than third place I I really can't so I'm gonna put him in first place just because the amount of damage that he's putting out is like he is countering his counter like he is defeating Nevsky Joan right like straight up like it's it's actually insane so he's going at the top of the list here I am going to max him absolutely I already have him at five five like three two or something like that so yeah that is definitely where he goes in my opinion next we have the gathering commanders they all belong in the f tier as well we have Torgny and Wafura these are kvk specific commanders so I feel weird even like ranking them but I would say like you could like with Bobber and Margaret you could force them to work except I think they might actually be like worse I don't even remember I haven't played this kvk in so long I'm gonna put them in like c tier we're gonna put them c tier like as just a worse version of Mar uh, Bobber and Margaret but you guys can let me know what you think about that do they deserve to be lower I I don't know I mean they're literally free and maxed out so whatever next we have the epic commanders okay now this is uh we're getting we're getting to the bottom of the barrel, barrel here okay let me be honest with you guys okay on this tier list epic commanders like okay buy bars right buy bars is better than the f tier commanders but like that's pretty much it honestly like, like maybe you can make the the argument that he'd be like he'd be like here or here right but like realistically I'm putting him I'm putting him here right because like a fully expertise Frederick is going to pump out a lot of single target damage um we have a 2005 target AoE on by bars which is nice so I'm going to put him BT or, sorry D tier let's see I'm Imotep I'm sorry I'm mispronouncing that I know I am uh but he's a really good support in the open field um so he he deserves D tier but like when you compare him to like some of these other commanders like from raw damage perspective like the 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 usefulness of like Mulan is just better than him like I can't see I can't put him higher than D I really can't he's one of the best epic commanders in the game I I think he's a low D tier that's my that's the truth like may, again maybe you could put him here right like maybe I, I I don't know he's just he definitely belongs there next is Joan I'm gonna put Joan here um she's also a she's basically Mulan but free right uh until you expertise Mulan Joan of Arc is probably better to be honest with you guys because you're gonna expertise her and it's like a four second buff and it's like one of the most insane buffs in the game but even still like th that's really all she does so I'm gonna put her here I think you can make the argument that she would go here uh but like these epic commanders man they're epic commanders I just can't see them being higher I really can't like maybe you can make the argument that like Joan lands in C just because she's basically a free version of Mulan but like I don't know like KVK one of course she's much better but 
season of conquest i literally never see her like you just don't see her ever uh and i think that is that is that just tells you something right it tells you that she just doesn't belong here and that is unfortunately the truth for epic commanders um sun tzu i would say is still probably in my opinion the best um epic commander you could make the argument that he goes like here uh, of course i think depending on how much you value buffing and debuffing but he does have a five target aoe he does have rage regeneration he does have infantry health so he and he does have damage taken reduction so i think you could early game especially early game you could slap him behind somebody like uh obviously you have artel right you could slap him behind there and get some nice damage off but late game you just don't see him you don't he's he's d tier at best uh and then the rest of these commanders i mean the truth is guys like these are all f tier that like epic commanders have not been updated they never got museum relics they never got any love they never got uh, like there's, there's just no power creep here there's nothing they're all f tier they can, they are unusable in the open field effectively you can tell me like bjorn maybe right bjorn maybe kira maybe like the truth is you never see epic commanders because they're not good that's literally it right so that's it for the entire tier list these are again placeholders for commanders that don't exist that is everybody okay and i think this is where i'm going to leave it off i think this is a fair assessment of all the commanders in the game uh, i'm only blocking the trash commander down here so you don't even have to worry about that if you want to take a little screenshot here i'll do a little smile for you guys but that is ranking every commander of the game and as you can imagine uh we didn't talk about green or blue commanders uh, and that's because if the epics can't even push out of f tier very far you can assume that the blue and greens are even below all this right so yeah that's the truth i'm not even going to waste our time so if you made it all the way to the end of this video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on this tier list let me know if i'm wrong about your favorite commander i probably am wrong about some of these things because i don't have every, every commander in the game so i haven't tested every commander in the game because there's over 80 commanders in the game and i don't have a million dollars so you know shoot me i don't know what to say but let me know your thoughts on on this in the comments section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace